Hi, I'm Dr. Galena, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, and this is our official YouTube channel. It's a place where I pray that you will grow and fall in love with Christ and increase your connection and commitment with him through covenant building. We have a saying around here that if you have a covenant with God, then you have a God of covenant and he is obligated to do things with you, to you, through you and for you. Cutting Edge is already a part of some major humanitarian and social activism projects. We feed daily over 80,000 children in Zimbabwe. We help parents with special needs children, and we also are a part of criminal justice reform because we want to see the redemption plan for man. Thank you for partnering with us in your giving. All of our giving information is at the bottom of this screen. We know that you're going to love what you hear here. So please like, share, comment, subscribe right here and turn on those bell notifications. We get pretty busy here at Cutting Edge. And so you may miss us, but right here, you can catch all of our replays. We here at Cutting Edge believe that the four walls of the church is not the only place to experience the love of God. We're here to go to the four corners of the earth, and we're going to show you that this is the way.
Good evening, Cutting Edge. I'm Dr. Gaylena. I am the campus pastor, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, as well as the founder and chancellor of Realm University. And you are here tonight, and I am excited. Right there in the uh, comment section, drop your name and where you are um, uh, tuning in from. Um, all of our friends across the nation, we are excited to have you here at Cutting Edge. And listen, this morning, prayer was so, so good. And I've been getting in more and more into this realm of glory that we have been teaching about, that we've been talking about, uh, that we have been studying and praying in. And I'm telling you, I'm personally seeing manifestations of what's going on. I'm 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 talking about uh, the manifestations today. I'm talking about today from what we prayed. I'm literally walking in and getting testimonies and walking through uh, certain situations and hearing just people are just just doing some amazing things. So let's see who's in here. Hey, Lavinia from Syracuse. I can't wait. I'm on my way to Syracuse, New York in uh, just a minute with uh, Marquita D. Collins. So I'm excited to come and see you in person. Um, I see LaShondra is in the comments and Althea. Hey, Deborah, right there from Dayton, Ohio. Woo woo to the Bucks. I'm so excited that you are in the house today. Um, I love you so much. She's been a part of Cutting Edge for quite some time. Here we go. Come on, Handle, Missouri. This is my family's hometown. Kenyatta is out there representing real strong. Uh, Shantae, welcome. Listen. I know that's right. Week two. She said week two for me. LaShondria, she said, I'm Memphis. I'm repping Memphis right now. Hey, Eric Cole, that is our worship pastor. Y'all hear him singing all the time. He's here. Keisha Hunter, Chicago. I think I know you. I know you know you, don't I? Well, it's so good. I'm so glad that you are connected here at Cutting Edge um, in this ministry right now. Tawanda and Sean, I see y'all. Y'all are repping. Um, so I talked this morning i talked about um she said yes okay i had to make sure because it's not too many people spell a name like you spell your name so gracious hunter uh i am so excited to uh to walk with you i got bombarded in my dms on facebook and y'all know i don't even do uh dms on facebook or what is it called um messenger um i typically turn it off but i, I don't know, whatever it's on right now and I got some DMs from some people and they were like, hey, we want to partner with Cutting Edge because the Cutting Edge technology and information that you guys are releasing, we need it here in our cities and in our ministry. So I'm going to be looking. Hey, come up. There she is. There's a woman of God right there. I'm talking about you already. Uh, <laughs> Lady Ashley, her ministry is a powerful, powerful prayer ministry. And they're like, listen, we want to partner with y'all because we want to be able to bring this to our area. So guess what? Uh, Lady Ashley, I'm coming to the ATL, okay? I mean, I'm telling you, it's going to be a real strong presence in the ATL from Cutting Edge really, really soon because we're working on some things right now there in uh in the atl and so i'm excited to connect with you and to posture myself with you to give you everything i got so you can move forward also in ministry and bless the people of god because see i can make an appearance but you have a presence there and i'm so grateful to god for uh, for that and for partnering with other ministries so we are going to have okay we're going to have uh, a conversation. We're going to do a Zoom. I'm going to invite you guys on Tuesday to a Zoom. I'm going to do two because uh, it's going to be important that I'm able to connect to those that are, are able to do it in the midday and those that are able to do it in the evening. But 12 noon, 12 noon Central Standard Time, I'm going to connect with those of you that want to partner with Cutting Edge in various ways. And then those uh, at um, uh, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, here is the Z, the Zoom meeting ID and passcode in order to get there right now. There it is. Now, if you want, um, if, if you want this email to you, you're gonna have to email us and say, hey, um, I want to be a part 
Let me get that Zoom out you, <laughs> that password, that passcode. This is it right here, right now. I'm doing this um, so that you can um, also, uh, so that you can partner with us and understand what this looks like um, as well as, as well as, and so we'll have a breakout room, as well as those of you, you guys know that we have done the internal launch of Cutting Edge and we're working towards our external launch because there are some external things that beyond the teaching part that Cutting Edge itself, the platform Cutting Edge is going to be able to do in and around the planet because we are a local body with a global impact. And so there are people everywhere that want to be a part of cutting edge in their community. So we're going to open that up as well. So those of you that want to be a part of cutting edge and you want to uh, work with us towards our external launch, we are also same meeting time, same space. Uh, we will have some cut, some uh, cutout rooms for you to be there. So I'm talking about everywhere, same times, 12 central and 6 p.m. central standard time, 6 p.m. central standard time and 12 p.m. Um, yes, uh, central standard time. This is the Zoom link for you guys to be there. All right. Cause it's time to talk. I know so many of you like have ideas and so many of you want to know what's going on. How do I connect? How do I connect to cutting edge? I want to be a part of the external launch. I want to be a part of the intricacies of what's going on. And then those of you that have ministries, Lord knows I can't wait to support and to uh, partner with you. And I'm gonna tell you all of the beautiful ways that uh, we plan to partner with you to make sure that you stay equipped, okay? Stay equipped with cutting edge technologies and information, revelation from on high. This is going to be so dope. I'm so excited. Um, tonight's Bible study. Y'all ready for this? Now, I, I will have our executive pastor is going to come back on tonight and re-give this testimony, okay? Or not testimony, but re-give this information. So if you missed it, um, if you if you want you know more of it, we're going to say it again. We'll give that Zoom link out again, that passcode. Uh, our executive pastor, my sister, my real blood sister. She my blood sister. We got the same mama, same daddy, same grandmama, same. Okay. My real blood sister, executive pastor, we call it EP, uh, Glenetta Crowder, is going to um, come back with that same information. And we're going to expand this to all of you that want to be a part. But let's get to it. Y'all ready? Let's get to it. Are y'all ready for the Bible study tonight? Huh? Go get your one of my favorite lines and one of my favorite songs says, Don't get go, go get your Bible and don't play with me. Huh? It's one of my favorite lines of a, a Jay Moss song from, from way back when, right? He says, Go get your Bible and don't play with me, huh? So it's got to be in the word. I can't wait to open up the word of God with none other than pillar. Robert uh, Cager, we call him Alexander sometimes because it's a whole bunch of Roberts and I don't know how we got all these Roberts in our community <laughs> of faith, but we absolutely love. Have y'all been enjoying, put, put a one in the chat box if you have been enjoying Bible study with uh, Robert and I on Wednesdays and even in the mornings on Wednesdays morning, put a one in the chat box. Let me see what's going on as we welcome him. So I said, one, <laughs> as we welcome him to the stage. Good evening um, to all of you. Thank you. All right, Sean, come on. We're on the LaShondria, Tasha, Pastor Glenetta, Deborah, uh, Tawanda. I know that's right. Keisha Airy, like fire. You hear me? It has been phenomenal. Kiki, it's been phenomenal. Hey, uh, Phineas, we are so excited to have all y'all a part. And, and listen, let's go. Y'all ready? Let's go. Hey! Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> One let's of my go. absolute favorite teachers in the whole wide world. Uh, oh, wow. And it's not because I taught him. Um, a lot of what he knows, but it is because he is such a gift to the body of Christ. Let me tell y'all something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Robert Alexander Cager has such a gift um, um, in, in, in just the extrapolation and the articulation of the word of God. And so I have him here with me. I've had him here with me through this series of glory. And I'm going to tell you as I'm praising uh, God for him, 
I, we got some bad motor scooters a part of our team. And in just a moment, you're going to hear from the other pillars too. That's her right there. Tawanda <laughs> Irvin and Sean Irvin are also pillars of yes, cutting edge. Yes. Oh, and God. you talk about teachers. Woo! And, yeah. and that woman of God pray. Yeah. Tawanda, oh my God. I'm telling you, we've got some amazing pillars a part of cutting yeah. edge. And uh, they have ama their amazing gifts to the body. We have Suzette and Byron Crenshaw, uh, uh, Althea, uh, 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 Minister Ken. We've got some amazing, amazing pillars that are ready and sharp with the word of God. Hello, Ivory Vaughn. And let me just give a shout out to his baby boy who turned 10 today. Yes. Happy birthday. Um, I just, I love my people, okay? I love my people and I love love. Uh, but I absolutely love um, this lesson that we're going in. My apostle that ordained me, Apostle um, um, Anthony Johnson, when he ordained me, he called me the glory apostle. And, um, you know, I didn't really understand what that meant. Obviously, those of you that have been following me in ministry, um, I sing, I worship, I play keyboard. And oftentimes I'm caught up in glory realms and um, we have seen manifestations of healing, miracle signs, deliverances, and things of that nature. When nobody is saying anything or doing anything, just because the presence has been so thick. You remember those days, Robert. Okay. All right now. All right. All right. And so my apostle, uh, Apostle Anthony Johnson, uh, when he ordained me as bishop and apostle he uh, orda and prophet, he ordained me, and those were different times, but he ordained me as the glory apostle. And so this has been something that uh, has been following me over a decade and more um, as, a, as a particular office and title. But even as a little girl, um, I would see manifestations and I could sense, and, uh, and it, it may have come also because I'm a, a musician. I, I started playing the organ from my grandfather's church when I was nine years old. And there, I could sense, I didn't know a lot of what he was saying. I didn't understand a lot of what he was saying, but I could sense certain shifts even before he would indicate it with his voice or yes. before he would indicate it with his word. Yeah, I could, yeah, like God would just, I could sense something. Well, I, and so I would place different things according to how just the presence would just rest on me. Yeah, that's so and it would shift yeah. the entire service. Now, let me be honest. That was that's a good time. There were also times when I was tired and ready to go home. <laughs> that I would literally, all right, let me just say it. I would literally change <laughs> the sound in the room. Let me just be honest. I would change the sound in the room because I know how to set up. Get there's Gabby. <laughs> it's time Gabby's to go. Position. We know time to go. how to wrap them up. <laughs> Bring them cords on through. <laughs> Let me tell the truth, okay, up in here. And I'm like, all right, uh, minister, uh, evangelist. Um, <laughs> Wind it on up. It a little too long. Let me wrap you right on up. Yeah. <laughs> and I would wrap them right on up and give out because there was just something about being able to be sensitive to the atmosphere, shifting the atmosphere with music, with the technology of music. Uh, because it's what God gave us. And so just from a little girl, I've always been in this kind of vein. And so this is a very special uh, ministry and a very special lesson to me, specifically because it was something that literally uh, uh, came from various multiple encounters yeah. um, um, that after they would happen, I would go back sometimes and be like, now, what was that? Like, yeah, how did yeah. that happen? When, and, and there were certain things that when I would see and since I'll give this testimony, my grandmother died in our church service. My great grandmother, I'm sorry. My great grandmother died in our church service when my grandfather was the preacher. And I remember being on the organ, like what? <laughs> I mean, like she said, like gave her last breath, okay, dead <laughs> in the church on the front row, and my grandfather was preaching, and I'm like, <laughs> just like what we what we supposed to do? 
But I'm telling you, God took over. I did not stop playing. I started playing different chords. My grandfather went down there. He didn't make a big spectacle of it. He literally went down. Oh, yeah, Carmen. I'm serious. He went down there and prayed for her. And as soon as I felt it break on in me, I went back to playing how I was playing. And he went back to the pulpit. And she came back. She said, and came back alive. Y'all, I'm telling y'all what to know. I, there's some folk from our old church that, that can verify. It happened. This good thing happened. Yes. And um, so the ambulance came and they was like, we can. She died just for a minute. She back. <laughs> so, I mean, this was, but this was our culture. This was, yes. just, this is just the way things were. And so there were a lot of things that I discerned and I understood and I grew up in, in, in the congregation that I grew up in. Um, and then of course, fast forwarding, I recognize that, Hey, God is just, is not just releasing his glory in the church. Because then as I went into corporate America in various places, I would be at board. There's Arnett, Arnett Washington. See, he was a part of our church. He said, I remember that. I see, I, I knew the saints was on. I knew the saints was on. Y'all better tell us y'all on here. Stop hiding in the background. <laughs> I, listen, you need a, you need a, you need a witness. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. You need a witness. So anyway, uh, but I am have been in corporate situations at boardroom tables and i could sense a shift in the atmosphere again Woo! i'm talking about in boardrooms and god would give me a wisdom and literally there would be a glory that would be released and i would release it out of my mouth and i'm telling you that there would be a manifestation from on high that would shift that shifted the trajectory of big business I mean, in a major way. And so I'll just stop right there. But I want you to know that the same glory that God releases in the church, the same glory, the, sta the same concept of glory, I should say, that he releases in the church, that he releases in various places, he also releases in the world through you. And so we are, we are here explicitly to make sure that we take this kind of, of understanding um, um, out into the four corners of the earth as we have experienced in the four corners of the church. Because it's been so good. It's been so good. But we can't hide it. We can't just keep it to ourselves. Hey, Wendy, we can't just keep it to ourselves. We have to be able to share it with the world. And so the reason why we're doing this, um, this extrapolation, this understanding of glory is because we want you to understand that, that there are, and we have gone through, or we're going through 21 different types of glory. It's function and it's manifestation. It's, it's a uh, definition is function and it's manifestation so that you can understand that in so many things in all things that we do, we give thanks and praise unto God because we're releasing these types of glories in our everyday happenstances, our everyday circumstances, our, our, our everyday yes, environment, God. because we become, listen, we become the ambassadors of the kingdom. Yes. We become the releasers of his glory. Our works, the Bible declares that the people, we are supposed to be the ones that give praise to his glory. We are the praise of his glory. That means people will see our good works and do what? Glorify our father, which is in heaven. And so our works come from him, his divine help, his divine intervention, his divine technologies and, and wisdoms and knowledge that we use. And so we put this study together so that you can understand that you've been giving God glory whoop, and didn't even know it. You've been, you know, even in the, um, I think it was Cleos. That was the one that I know Benita said took her out. The Cleos glory. And we're going to talk about that. And I'm not going to, I just want to just testify to this. Um, those of you that you have gone through all kinds of stuff. Wasn't it good this morning to find out that you were operating in the Cleos glory, the glory that allowed you to testify about the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, because who? Me? Ain't been perfect. <laughs> I've had some tests. I've had some trials. I've had some tribulations. I've been the victim and I've been the victimizer. Okay. Tell the truth. I've been the one that put somebody else through hell. Oh, 
Yes, Lord. I've been the one that caused defeat in somebody else's life. I was okay. I know you was perfect. And anytime there's a, a bad thing that goes on in your life, it was because somebody else did it to you. Well, let me just be the, the honest one in the room and say, no, no, no. It was some things I said that caused somebody hurt. It was some things I did that caused somebody else hurt. It was some things that I thought and had other people to think about other people that caused people hurt. All righty then. But because of God's saving grace. Hey, Charles, I know that's right. We lift our hands because huh? we're going to tell the truth on ourselves. But because of God's grace, his mercy, his love, his nature, his ability to forgive us of our sins. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And then reclaim our lives. We can absolutely operate in the glory of God. And so believe it or not, tonight I'm going to let uh, Robert go. Y'all hear me? Y'all push him and say go tonight. All right. Tonight you go go. So Robert, um, I, I'm just so grateful tonight. I want you to go. Uh, I'm actually going to come off today and just and be in the chat room with everybody else. But it is such, and I'm going to pray, but it is such a, a it, it's such a, as a teacher. And, and again, Robert is not 14 anymore, but, but just knowing that certain things that, you know, I taught years ago, not only are you teaching, but you're living, you're manifesting in your life, in your work life, uh, in your, in your personal life and in your business life. And, and that to me is like the highest, uh, thank you. You know, that is the highest form of, of just, um, honor and respect to see you operate like this. It absolutely just blesses me beyond the nth degree. Gabby said is, <laughs> it is a blessing. And, um, uh, I'm not going to spread all of our business, but it is so interesting because people have now recognized this about you and they're coming to you. They're like, hey, can can you mentor me um, in these things? And, and one of the things I can tell you that Robert is amazing at is honor and respect. And and when questions arise or when things happen, he calls me immediately. Y'all hear me immediately and lays things um, at my charge and 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 gets my responses and and, and understands my counsel, you know, like uh, you know, like just nothing out of I've ever experienced. And so I'm just so grateful to be partnered with this amazing man of God. I have to give him his accolades in this point. And you're gonna hear the rest of it tonight. He is an amazing teacher, studier of God's word. And, and it's not just knowing the word. His application is off the chain. I wish, and one day we will, because it's going to be for something else. I wish you had a picture of what you look like before <coughs> and what you look like now. Huh? Let me just, maybe I need to put it on my, my page. Have y'all seen his videos of him out there uh, exercising in the streets? <laughs> Have y'all seen his body? Okay. <laughs> but he has literally extrapolated this information and extrapolated this counsel and used it to build himself, his personhood, his, his mind, his body, and his soul. And we can all, we can all lay claim to that, lay access to that. Willona, won't he push you to the limits? Willona's one of his, his clients. Push you to the limits because we need it. We need that push. And so I'm grateful that I've been his push. And tonight he is going to push you. Are y'all ready? I saw y'all say, let's go. But y'all know I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a Baptist clothes. I got three clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my last one. Hello, Robert Cajun. How are you? How are you, Dr. Galen? I'm well. Good to see you. Good to see you. You just, you just have to make me cry. Don't you? <laughs> I love I you so much. I need to know that this is real between us. It's real. It's real. It's it's real. It's been years. Um, the good, the bad, the ups, the downs. That's what real relationship is about. Um, yeah. Not necessarily bad, but coming to understandings. And that's, you know, it's never been bad. It's been about coming to understandings. And, you know, and I'm, 
I'm excited uh, to be um, connected. I'm excited to be in partnership and I'm excited to um, submit um, the articulation that the Lord has been giving me um, because the Lord told me and I put it on Facebook. He's whispered to me. He says, son, just because you have the articulation doesn't mean you have the authority. And so when he was teaching, he was teaching me about authority in the kingdom and protocol today. And he said, if my people would submit their articulation, I would give them authority. I said, whoa. And so he began to talk to me about there's one thing to be trademarked in the natural. And then there's another thing to be trademarked in the spirit, spirit to, to be granted access um, and, and authority. And God has begun to talk to me about the secrets of honor and the secrets of honor has nothing to do with the, the with the with the, the misconceptions that we've made. And I'm going to say I'm going to be uh, diplomatic um, with the misconceptions we have in the body of Christ. Um, with spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, pastors, leaders, spiritual sons, you know, pushing my agenda forward, pushing my ministry forward. That is not honor. That is, that's, we got that all twisted. And so for me, these glories come through trial. These glories come through trauma. I, these glories and understanding these glories, it comes through, I'm also glory encounters I had as a child, but I begin to really understand these glories through the traumas that I've went through um, in our black church, because many people don't know, um, we haven't really shared it. We share it, but we haven't yeah. consistently shared it. But Dr. Galena and I come from the same stock and legacy, spiritual Absolutely. legacy of our churches. And um, our churches are connected um, by yeah. family, by blood family, by and blood. by spiritual family, by blood, by marriage, yeah. by spiritual. Every angle of connection that families are connected, our families are connected. And so, yeah. um, I would hear of her name many different times as a young boy and hear of the, the Littles and the Abbeys and all of these different fan parts of the family. I'm like, who are these people? And I've started to see them at different church functions because our churches would get together like this all the time in Chicago. And I would see her often as a little boy. And then when I got to high school and, and saw her, for the, I was in shock. And because I was like, this is who this has been. And then the, and then the story began, right, in a whole different way. But God has been teaching me about honor and authority because it's really, really the really strong missing piece. I believe that the body of Christ has been missing. And that's why we haven't been seeing manifestation is they we've been missing truly what honor is. And we've been preaching honor from the dysfunctions of our family. So we try to get try to get the dis, to try to get the dis, dysfunction fed in church woo, rather than getting the dysfunction not just fixed, but moving into inner healing and then moving into the exports of his glory. And so we try to put on, we try to address some of our familiar traumas in our churches and call it honor, but it's a pyramid scheme and it's slavery. And so because of that, we have not seen the true manifestation of God's power and his glory. And um, it's it, just because it's not on purpose or you were ignorant to it doesn't mean it wasn't happening. Right. <laughs> and doesn't mean you want a victimizer or a victim of it. And so mm. prayerfully, what the glory light does is one of the main things it does is we take you through a process. It exposes yes. and it lets you know the truth about what's really going on. And so hopefully these, this lesson has been really helping. And I begin to really see the pyramid scheme I was a part of when I came to Dr. Galena's ministry because we both were part of the pyramid scheme. And so God had brought her out before me. And so she was able to tell me, son, this is what we've been in. All right, let me, let me tell you, little homie. Let me tell you what we've been through and what you've been in. So, and then, and this is how I begin to recognize, oh my God, this is what I've been in. And she did it through the word of God. Never, and I'm gonna let me tell you something. I, you know, this was never, because that's the spirit in the city of Chicago, but I want to testify. The Dr. Gay Linda don't steal members. No, this ministry don't still we're not interested in that and has never. It has always been the glory that has been attracted. And if there's anything that I've been attracted to in her on her life, it has been the glory. The questions I've always asked about was the glory, the supernatural, uh, the thing, things like that that have taken place because I recognize she did it with love, but she did it with the word of God and gave me such a strong foundation an explanation about who I was. The church that I came out gave me foundation in, in a lot of different ways, 
But I even had to, God had to, it's interesting. And this is what I really want to, as we begin to move into this, I want to talk, talk about, and I'm, you know, if you, I, I would love for you to respond your thoughts on this. Dr. When we're dealing with paradigm shifts and, and, and changing our mindset um, and, and moving in that and detoxing the mind, do you not know that sometimes your foundation has to be deconstructed? Do you not know that sometimes your foundation has to be dug up again? Yeah. And sometimes say, well, that's my foundation. God gonna build on that and that's good. No, 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 no. Some foundations have cracks in it. That's when you do an assessment on the house and you do an inspection. If, if foundations can have cracks in them, just because it was foundation does not mean it was solid. No. It doesn't mean that it's, it's able to be built upon. And so the Lord literally took me through a series of, of processes. He had to literally re or he had to reconstruct and reorganize my foundation. And, and really, I had to start over in a lot of different ways. And he had to take, as we, you know, the phrase that we say, the meat off the bones and spit it out. So there was a lot of, there was some meat that was in, you know, the pyramid schemes of the religious churches that I've come out of. But it was a lot of bones getting in the way that we had to undo. And so as a result, um, that's why we're teaching these glories because these glories really give you the manifestation that we have been waiting for and praying for for years. I personally believe that this is one of the main conversations that gives us answers for why some of our prayers have not been answered. Oh, absolutely. And in the song that says, is my living in vain? And so you begin to talk about, um, is my praying in vain? And so you begin to think about, you know what, it's, I feel like I'm wasting my time, hope deferred. That's why the lesson is called the hope of glory. So we yeah. want our expectation and our faith to be restored in what we're talking about, that your prayers are not in vain, but the, what happens is, is that your prayers become ineffective. That's praying right. is not vain, but your prayers become ineffective because you're not praying with the knowledge of the right glory. And you're not properly applying it and applying it. And so we praying and we're and we're we're doing all of these things. But God, if God don't want you to be ignorant of the enemy's devices, he doesn't want you to be ignorant of his realms of glory. Oh. And so we're praying, and that's what we're talking about praying amiss. It's not yes. just this missing the mark, but it's you don't even know. <laughs> what glory we're in. You don't even know what targets. You don't even know what God wants to do in the atmosphere. And there is language to this. And so God in the midst of praying and fasting literally dug up this gift of articulation. Out of, but he said, articulation, Robert, does not give you authority. Submission does. And so I learned that every articulation I get, she will get an alert. Because unless it's stamped and approved by authority, I don't have access and clearance to move in California where God has sent me to move in my glory. My glory has to be stamped. Your glory has to be stamped. And actually, these are what this is the foundation and preliminary talks that I'm really kind of setting you up for what we're talking about, because you're not even going to be ready for these five glories unless your heart, these next five glories, because these are gatekeeping glories. And so you're not even going to understand these gatekeeping glories until you understand the necessity of honor and the necessity of submitting who you are, not just what you do, but submitting who you are. Yeah. Woo, Last Jesus week Christ. I talked about the gatekeeper, the gatekeepers and the gatekeeping glory, the ones uh, uh, that that returned the glory to the house of God. Yes. And um, and so we're going into so it was a setup for what we're going into now um, because the glory does need to be returned. There was a couple of things that you talked about and, and you said this. Here's the deal. My dad was was a, a construction. Um, uh, he did construction for all of um, a large part of my life. Twenty five. Yeah. plus years. And so he brought blueprints home all the time. And and so and I went on sites with him all the time because see, me and my sister, I, I know we look real girly and we put on makeup and, and nails and all that kind of stuff. But when I tell you I was uh six or seven years old with refrigerators on my back. <laughs> I my was on the roof. Yep. <laughs> I was on the roof of, of houses uh taking off the, the shingles. Listen, I know how to lay a foundation, I know how to put up 
walls. I know how to, I know how to do it. Oh, my daddy was, did not be, uh, believe in the child labor laws. There was no child labor law. <laughs> 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning, we still working at people's houses. All right, just, just so you know. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to building, <laughs> Bree said, yes, she does. When it comes to building, you have to check your foundation if you want to add another level to the house. Yes. Ooh. Okay. All right. The foundation has got to be deep enough. If you want to add another level. Or you won't get the ordinances from the city to build and not only that the other Ooh. thing that you have to make sure is that you have an excretory system in place that means that they it is able to take the waste out the the, the amount of waste per square footage that is built on it's you've got to have an excretory system in place not only that but you have also got to make sure you have the right electricity panels So the inner, inner workings, the infrastructure is what is important if you want to build, if you want it's to go to level. And so as high as you want to go is as much as you got to let go. As high as you want to go is, is as much as you want to hold on to the electricity, hold on to the, uh, the ability to to supersede or super expand and to super expose you. Shaman, break it. And you've got to have enough depth Come on. and direction down. Come on. If you're going to consider a new blueprint to move your life upward and forward. Ooh. And this is what we call dimensional thinking. This is what we call dimensional thinking. And this is what we this call dimensional we thinking. Yes. yes. This is what we call dimensional this, thinking. This is, this is dimensional thinking. Dimensional thinking. We have four principles, uh, four pillars to uh, my teaching ministry here at Rum University with the platform cutting edge, the, the campus ministry cutting edge. It's direct, directional learning. So in every direction God sends you know that he is going to learn you something right he's going to teach you something you don't know everything you need to know to go forward you don't know everything you need to know so that so we have to be in a mindset of directional learning that when i go in this direction i'm going to have to learn more so you're going to have to always be a student number one then number two there is diplomacy in everywhere you get the reason why it's important for you to understand honor is a lot of times we feel like oh we had an epiphany this is a this is a word but when you come into the presence of wisdom i say no robert i already said that i already know that you know but because you didn't say it in their presence they're like oh this is new. No, it's not new this is what i had to have and known before i even gave you the the part that you heard in the first place and so there is a right. there is a rectification there of, of the information there is a confirmation of the information but 99.9 .9 of the time it's not new to your teacher it was it was new to your articulation but it was not new to your teacher and so what you under what you will understand all right what you will understand in those moments is that the process that god purifies us through yes. causes us to have the diplomacy that he was just talking about that then later equates to honor Yes. And when you have honor, then you can have submission. And submission allows you authority because you cannot be, you cannot have any more authority than what you can then be submitted to. You cannot. Ooh. You cannot. So what authority do people really have these days? It, and that's a question. That's a really a question. You can check somebody's, you can check somebody's true authority in the realm of the spirit by how submitted they are. And that's important that, okay, okay. It's important that we comprehend and understand that it is time to verify. Yeah. <laughs> it is yep. time to verify. It is time the legality to in the realm of the spirit. The legalities in the realm of the spirit, there are legal demons that will literally put you on your tail, on your butt, on your face. By whose authority? Huh? Because they're going to say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? I don't know you. 
Now you've got the technologies, you've got the wisdoms and the skills, you have the courses and the classes, you have the articulation, but when you get to fighting, just like the sons of Skeeva, and I know I said this last week, you gonna get your tail whooped because you don't have any authority in what you are doing. And you worried about other people on your side knowing your authority, you need to make sure that your enemy knows your authority, that your authority is legitimate and they know that you're an authority. My God. I don't care if folk on this side title me or don't title me because I'm not fighting them. It's when I'm in the fight because that's where the legality. So that is the diplomacy. So that's number three. Then number four is discipleship. Now, discipleship is uh, uh, typically <laughs> Charles Reese. That's it. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it, Charles. Lord says, who in the hell? <laughs> yes. Who are you in hell? Who are, who are you? you in hell? Who Woo! are you? Who does hell recognize you as? Do yes. they know you? Because that is where the enemy is. And we have made our counterparts our enemy. They're not our enemy. They not it. And so I'm not fighting them. So typically yeah. I don't even, I don't even converse. I, so I, I heard last night, it, it, this happened maybe two or three years ago. Somebody with, with foolish and malicious intent sent me a, 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 like a three page text message. And it was, it was about destroying somebody else's character. And they wanted to know how come I, basically how come I wasn't participating. You know what I said in that text message? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I never responded. And I'm not going to respond because, first of all, you had evil and malicious intent behind what you were saying anyway. You're trying to destroy somebody's. <laughs> you're trying to destroy somebody's character, their name. Mm -hmm. You want me to participate in this foolishness. And so we three years later, and I still haven't responded. And I'm not going to respond because there is correction and correction is important. But when you are not doing stuff in love and, and your deal is always to destroy somebody, I don't, I, I'm not going to participate. I'm not gonna, because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh, Teresa, my silence spoke for me because I just found out last night. I wasn't even thinking about it. I found out last night that they still mad. <laughs> that I silence or do it. Silence or do it. Because I look at like, are you kidding me? Are you asking me to, to respond to such foolery? <laughs> you, you got to be... You bugging. You that's what my that's what my Sarah Cruz people would say. That's what my New York people would say. You bugging. Yeah. You yeah. Bugging. And I le I left the I left the conversation open ended. I didn't block anybody. I didn't I didn't uh turn off my phone. None of that. It was a silent rebuke because you're not gonna catch me down this road in destroying somebody because you're hurting. Yeah, that's what that's when it says when the scripture says foxes that uh, ruin the vine. Yeah, we talked about the glory, about the magnificence of the vine. Those are um, those are glory snatchers. People like that. Those are glory snatchers. They're dealing with a spirit in the context because y'all we didn't drift off. This is the context. Oh, this is the of, context. This is the glory. context. And so the, these kinds of interactions that you see people moving in, they're glory snatchers and they're parasites. They have spirits in them that are parasitic that comes to literally snatch away the life of the vine. And they're trying to literally um, uh, uh, get into the uh, network of what God is doing and cause there to be short circuits. And they're trying to get in the life, the electricity of the foundation of what God is doing. And so when people have to carry those spirits of, of drama and, and, and trauma and, and all of those things, and they refuse to deal with, like Dr. Gamelin just said, they're hurt. And so a lot of what a lot of a lot of what the Lord began to talk to me about with these glories came through me dealing with traumas in my life, came with me dealing with unmature, immature, I should say is the, is the correct word, immature places 
in my life and in my development. And that's why the Bible says work out your own what? Soul salvation. Yeah. Because we need to work those things out because that's where the glory begins to be revealed. Personal. We're literally just experienced this in the middle of a prayer conference. Yeah. I can, as a matter of fact, got to talk to you about that, Dr. Galena. Amen. So, amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Let amen. me tell you, but, but I'm, I'm going to just bring it home for you and I, and then I'm going to release you to, to go in this. And I, I know this is something, but uh, j just to be uh, open and transparent, hot open and uh, humble, open and transparent with yeah. Robert and I's relationship. There was a time when, number one, I was going through some things. I was going through a transformation and a change and I needed to shift gears and I did. And he in his own life, newly married, um, new new positions and God was going through some transitions and, and, and um, there was some faithlessness on both our parts, right? In our personal situations. And so when he came to me to pull on me for something that I did not have at that moment, um, I didn't have it. So I didn't give it. Um, and, and, right. and so he, so, it, you know, he, he sent me some text message, I, you know, four page letter, right. Uh, as well, the whole Bible. Huh? <laughs> he was, was sitting out. <laughs> I was offended. My little heart was, was, was hurt. My little heart, my little heart. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not close the door. I just did not no. answer that. I didn't answer that spirit. I've got the silence. So just so you know. Just so you know, so it's not that I give silence to just uh, people that want to be my enemy. Gabby. If I don't have it, I'm going to shut up because what I do know is I'm a vessel. Yes. I'm a vessel. And so I have to wait till God gives it to me to give to you. Because mm. if I give you what I got, if I give you my flesh. Listen, God, Jesus said flesh and blood didn't reveal it. You don't want my flesh and blood to reveal anything that's pertinent to your life in glory and your life in God. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to come from the Father. And so there are times when you are going to, you, you, you need to be patient in God. You need to be patient. Stop trying to pimp God or prostitute people's gifts or make them give you what you think you need make them give you what you don't think you're getting from god or oh, i'm gonna get from god's people no 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 don't do that don't don't do that don't force god's hand because he will whoop you okay he will spank you right where you are and and i'm telling you that you don't want to touch God's anointed. And so instead of responding to even Robert, I shut up because I recognize that Robert is God's anointed. So it wasn't just about him with me. It was also me. I said, I can't destroy him. Like, I feel like I want to just hit him in his mouth because he don't know what he's talking about. He's a little kid. And, you know, I'm like bossing up on my side. But I was, you know, God had to deal with me. Let's see. Because we 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 see it came out. <laughs> we see it in Chicago came out. <laughs> but I had to slow my roll. I had to move in a level of maturity that even though I didn't have the answers from God, I had the answers from the my standard of, of personhood, my mm, personhood. That's and good. And my personhood said. <laughs> Listen, my personhood said he needs something. I don't have it. At least encourage him to go to God. And so I did. And that's all I would say is that's good. Go to God. That was that was all I could give him at that moment. And he I mean, he would tell me, you know, OK, well, I know you was this once time in my life. And so now I'm going to move on. And I'm gonna, and I'm like, oh, OK, great. You know, and I know it was just him saying, no, want me back. Fight for me, you know. But I, I, I was not in that place. God had not given me that assignment. It was not for me to do that. And so I had to hold my own. And 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 I knew that God would, would do something miraculous. Thank God that he knew to cycle us back with each other. I just wanted to be open and honest with our yes. relationship. Yes. So that y'all can understand that as people, especially when we are experiencing the glory of God, when, when we are experiencing going through the pressure that it takes to actually fortify 
his glory because it has to be pressurized because glory is a different atmosphere. So if you're going to, if I was going to shift the atmosphere in this bottle, this bottle, I would have to look at this. I would have to pressurize it first before I put the top back on. You see what I'm saying? I would, if I was going to change the atmosphere, I would have to pressurize it. And that just shifted the whole atmosphere in that bottle. You want glory? You asking for pressure. All right. <laughs> this, let's put up the slides. Put up the slides. Put up the slides, woman of God. <laughs> and I put love y'all. I see y'all. <laughs> before you go, before you go, before you go, I have to say that this is, um, and we are talking about really how to um, really use our relationship as um, yeah. ministry, a tool of ministry. And the reason why is because when you talk about the spiritual mother, um, spiritual son, apostle, to, you know, mentee or mentor to mentee, all of that, we have all of those dynamics in our relationship. And to be honest, I, I haven't heard of a spiritual father or spiritual mother and son and daughter be open and transparent about the reality of what the tensions that can come as we're growing. And that's I, I blow my wig, but I'm already <laughs> I got to meet you, Charles Reese. You are yes, funny. we do. I love it. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and you know, I'm excited about really platforming um, and really, really using our relationship yeah. as an example because to be honest, this is how glory manifests when we teach together, and that's why there's so much synergy is because we have really been, we've been, um, we've through, been through it. it. We've been through it. And but what's interesting is you can go through it. People don't teach you that you can go through it with people and do it in love. We I never have, disrespected each I've other. Never, never, ever disrespected her. Period. Never. Because we I never love her. About each other. We never lied on each other. We never stabbed each other in the back. When, I never went to nobody else and said, you know, Robert, da, da, da. he never did that to me. He never, I never, 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 never. I never put my mouth on it because you know what? When, when that, because I was a man of prayer. Yes. I was a boy and a man of prayer. And when I would get in prayer, God would soften my heart every time and would say, I need you to go through this. You in trauma right now. You don't get it, but I need you to go through what's going on right now. You don't understand the distance between you and her right now. You don't understand what's going on between you and your home church right now. You don't understand why you've been excommunicated. You don't understand why you've been shunned. You don't understand any of these things. But what I am doing right now in you, Robert Cager, is I am pressurizing you. I am getting you to can hold and host my glory. And so what was happening was I did not know, but God was making my character at, at 14 years old, making my character at 21 years old, making my character, shaping my character with the divine nature at, at 22 years old. When I was texting her in my college dorm, just got married, asking her, where the heck are you? I need to know da 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 I'm trying to do da 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 because I understood spiritual protocol. But even in spiritual protocol, God will test you when your leader is not present and if and is going through their own situation. When Elijah was going through his own situation as his own for his own assignment and his own life, Elisha had to get somewhere and tell his friends, shut your mouth. I will not curse my father. Period. Chicago wanted me to curse her, but I did not. Period. I'm just going to put it out there. Period. And whoever's in Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. Chicago wanted me to curse her, wanted there to be tension. But I said, not so. Oh, no. When we weren't talking, are you a part of? Yes, I am. Love her to death. That's who she, this is who she is to me. Because who she was to me at 14 didn't change at 22 because we were in a different season. And that spiritual protocol and that God was teaching me, I don't know, before I even knew, before I even had the articulation of it. 
but because I also had a mother who wasn't about drama. Hey, that's Real it. Liddell. Come on and talk about this great Rhea Wilson. Rhea Liddell Wilson. And this is important because I'm actually going to go through these glories fairly quick because we're because because yeah. there's not a lot to them um, yeah. because they're activators. They're gatekeeping glories. But this is important that we lay this is important that we lay this this uh, groundwork so that way you understand how did y'all come up with this and where did this come from and why does this make sense. And as you know, we're, we're seeing that this is making sense to you all, that glory is really practical, it's really tangible, it has a weight to it, but yeah. it will literally, it will literally, um, you will not know how to, how to handle it if your personhood is not developed. And so we're in the ministry of personal development right now. This is the ministry of personal development and uh, mental development and getting you out of mental warfare. And that's actually in the lesson. And so I just wanted to make sure I honored her in that way to say, I never disrespected her in any kind of way. She's always been um, a, a loving woman of God, always has been a loving just person in general. It's, it's and the drama has not been in our relationship. We've always been transparent with one another from spiritual mother to spiritual son. And it will definitely free you. And my mother, Real Liddell Wilson, taught me honor, taught me respecting, not just because people are older than me. That's your titi. That's your auntie. You got to respect it. That's your no. She helped me to see what was on her life and helped me to see. She said to, she would always help me to much is given, much is required. That my mother raised me to understand pressure. Woo! I just want to say to you, mommy, you didn't know, but you were raising me to under to how to move in glory. My mother prayed and asked God, how do I raise Robert Cager, Robert Alexander Cager? She prayed and got the revelation from, from God like Hannah got for Samuel. Yes, she did. And I'm not perfect, still far from it, but I am in my process. And that's what will make you the difference. That's what will make you the standard cutting edge. It's not perfection, not having, not having a faultless life or a flawless life, but to be in the process. And so as a result, we want to release these glories and reveal these glories to you. Dr. Gellin, you want to say anything else? Yeah, yeah. Let me say this before I walk off. Uh, and as you can throw it up there. What, yeah, get them ready. The reason why some people have come to me for mentorship and I have declined in this way or, or spiritual mothering and spiritual uh, so, so forth on is because I can only give them what God gave me to give them. And that is dealing with your personhood. Mm. Most of them come to me and want me to deal with them and teach them how to do miracle signs and wonders that is a af that's the aftermath of my life in Christ. That's an aftermath. And so I can't teach you the end result. So when they come to me and they still want to be filthy or they still want to be negative Ooh. or they still want to have a gossiping spirit. I, I, there are some people that are close to me that are around me that still have a gossiping spirit. And if they haven't noticed, y'all notice real quick, when y'all get gossipy, what do I do? Get out the room. I shut down. I don't talk to you. I don't respond. I don't respond to gossip. I don't respond to, I can't. It's some, it's, it don't work for me. So when you got a whole uh, sequence and whatever about somebody else, I can't, it don't work for me. I'm not that person. I can't help you there. And so I walk away because if you want from me how to move in miracle signs and um, wonders, the only way I know how to do that is work on my personhood so that I can put in perspective how now God is going to use me as a vessel because I got to step out the way. He is where this glory comes from. And he is where this glory is going back to. <laughs> so those of you yes. that don't want to go through like what Robert, because I have to his face over the phone through text messages, he can talk about one thing and we go right back to his personhood. We go right back to that because when we become subject to the standards and the things of God, when we when we get into holiness and righteousness, and when we get into the divine nature of Christ, and when we release the fruit of the spirit, he says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. 
So all that that y'all see me do, and you're like, oh, I want to do that too. Don't ask me what's the prayer, how you pray that prayer to stretch our legs. It ain't about that. It's I've done it 50 different ways, 60,000 different times. It don't matter because that's not that. I got to make sure that I'm in a place where God is, is revealed, where he want to come. I got to be clean. I got to be ready. I've got to be submit, submitted. I've got to be yielded. And again, no, I'm not perfect, but I'm yielded. And so whatever God tells me to do in that moment or for that moment or, or in that space of time, then that is where I'm going to work. I'm going to work at my own soul salvation. I'm going to be there. I'm going to make sure that my hands are clean, my heart is pure, and that I've got the right motives and the right intentions. Most of you, the reason why you will never get my anointing, you will never get my mantle, you will never get where I'm at, is because you are still filthy in gossip. You are still filthy there. And it, what I got, I, I can't talk about what nobody else got, but what I got, if, if you're not ready to work on you, you're not going to have this kind of glory that's operating here, cutting edge. And with that, I yield the floor. Hallelujah. So our Father and our God, we love you and we honor you. We thank you for the opportunity to move into the hope of glory. We thank you that you've dealt with our foundation now. And now we can go up. You've dealt with our personhood and now we can extrapolate and now we can extract and now we can extend in your glory. And so we're grateful for what that you are doing and how you have prepared us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, physically, um, and even in our motives and our intents to really move in these realms of glory. We're excited, Father, to be in our process, and we yield to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I also want to decree and declare, God, I thank you for accuracy. I thank you for precision. I thank you for clarity of thought, clarity of speech. I thank you for an open ear and a heart to um, these glories, and I honor you and I reverence you that you would give us the ability to um, understand um, how you maneuver. Everybody just inhale for a moment. This may be different for you, but just inhale through your nose. Hold your breath for three seconds. And then exhale. Inhale through your nose. Hold for three seconds. And exhale. One more time, y'all. I'm going to tell you what's happening in a few minutes. Just inhale a few seconds. Inhale through your nose. Hold your breath. And exhale. What just happened was we just reset you um, to be able to receive and move forward in the journey that's about to take place now within these last 40, 45 minutes. Um, and then number two, um, when you inhale in the presence of God, you are inhaling his energy, his vibration, his frequency that he walks and lives in. Um, and then when you hold your breath, you are holding it in place. You're bringing in and breathing in um, the life of God, the life of glory, your life in glory. And then when you exhale, you give um, these realms of glory or whatever is being exposed to you at that time or opened up to you and ministered to you. You're giving it permission to flow through all 13 systems of your mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. Yes, I said there are a minimum of 13 systems. Um, and the reason why I always say minimum, because as a scientist, I'm recognizing and as a teacher and declarer of his word, I recognize that um, we're always studying and we're always learning. And so I never try to cap anything as a as. And that's one of the things I learned as a researcher. I never cap and say there are seven this and that's it. I kind of do. I like to say minimum when I'm talking about the things of God, um, because God is infinite and we are always we're lifelong learners. And um, we're, we're, I'm, as you can tell, I'm, I'm now in this Bible study mode and I want to begin to now teach you about the importance of being a student and a researcher and a scientist in the glory of God. Because the glory of God is basically the science and the mathematics um, of how God does a thing and how he maneuvers in the realm of the spirit. It, the, 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 the glory of God is science. The glory of God is spiritual math. And the glory of God is also um, the glory of God is also science math and it's also an experience 
and it's a realm and it's how he moves it's also a part of his economy okay it's also part of his treasury that's the word that i was looking for it's in, in, in it being an experience and a realm it's science it's mathematics and it's a part of his economy he opens up his treasury to you okay and i know pillar glenetta is a science teacher actually one of my if one of my favorites uh one of my favorite teachers is pillar glenetta talking about when she gets in that mode of, of teaching about science and the atmospheres and things of that nature. I just absolutely love it. Um, but that's what we are in, in at, here at Cutting Edge and Bible Study. We are becoming students and researchers of his word. All right. And before you move into the research, one, one of the things that I love about God's word is the way God examines you as you are examining it. Okay. This is one of the this is probably the only text, if not the only text, that as you're reading it, you are being examined as you are examining it. A science book doesn't do that for you. A history book doesn't do that for you. A Hallmark card don't do that for you. But the word of God, a poem doesn't do it for you. But the word of God, when you study the Bible, it is the only text that is living and active. It's the only text that's living and active that will examine you. Examination is a medical scientific term. It will begin to help you discover who you are, what you are, and what's attached to you. If there are any parasites, diseases, ailments, sicknesses, dysfunctions, um, abnormalities that are part of your nature, that the word of God needs to purge out and then renew your nature, renew your DNA, and not only your, your spiritual DNA, but yes, your your physical DNA code, your ACTG, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guamine are the four. Uh, this, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because, and I'm saying this, these are the four parts of your DNA that makes you you. That makes you you. Nobody has the same DNA sequence as you. So that means there is a specific glory assigned to you. And I'm actually, actually at the end of my, my presentation. But go forward. But I really wanted to actually bring that to the forefront that I, I want you to have an ear to say, God, how these how do these glories apply to my DNA sequence? How do these glories apply to my life, my story, my history? Let's move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to move forward. Um, and I just want to give you the background scriptures. I'm actually we've been in these scriptures for a while. So I'm just actually going to name these Colossians one and five. And then at the bottom, you have cross reference scriptures, Ephesians one and 17. 2 Peter 1 and 11, and uh, Romans 1 and 17. Um, and so we have these cross-reference scriptures that are going to pair with Colossians 1 and 5 that says, your faith and love rise within you as you access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realms. And so with each level of access, there needs to be an ascension of faith and love. There needs to be another level of faith and love in order for you as a prerequisite to access another realm of glory. And as a result of accessing another realm of glory, you will move upward in faith and love. These are foundational principles. Let's move forward. Hallelujah. And so living within you, this is what the scripture says, is the Christ who floods you with the expectation, the hope of glory, which is doxa, the mystery. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. This scripture is a foundational scripture that we've been talking, walking through with saying that God, um, through his son, Jesus Christ, has filled you with the hope of glory, has filled you with doxa. Doxa is the glory of transformation of alignment. He's filled you with the glory through Jesus Christ that will help you the image and likeness of Christ. He's filled you with the glory that will help transform you, all right, by the renewing of your mind. And so the glory that helps you trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind is the doxa glory. And so if you're low in transformation and, and high in cycles, of trauma, you're low in doxa glory. You don't have enough of the weight of God's doxa. You don't weigh heavy enough in the realm of the spirit and you don't have enough of his glory in you to transform your nature and to transform you from the inside out. And transformation physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually happens with the doxa glory, okay? And you have to align there mentally um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in order to see a holistic experience because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's move forward. 
And as you begin to align in these glories that I'm about to just name for you, you will see a leveling up in your faith and love uh, as you move in these glories and in your personhood. All right, I'm going to name these uh, 10 glories um, that have to do with the higher realms. So there are higher realms of light and then there are lower realms of light. God and um, the angels, the divine, God and the divine and the saints of God. That's how I'll label it. God and the divine and the saints of God, the people of God and the creatures of God move in, um, in, the, in heaven, move in the higher realms of glory. Move in the higher realms of glory. The lower realms of glory, uh, or light, I should say, um, the lower levels or realms of light is what Satan, um, formerly known as Lucifer, what Satan um, moves in, along with powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places, rulers of darkness of this present world, also humans, when they move in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Um, the, these are lower realms of light, but I want to name the higher realms of light first um, to give them uh, their, these are priority. And then I want to give you the lower realms of light that you, when you, that you can walk in, that you walk in when you're in um, uh, your flesh and when you're in your attitude uh -huh, and when you're in the immature places. Let's go back to the first slide. I just want to say them um, and then I'll go and then we'll move forward. Thank you so much. Halal, Kabold, Tohar. Doxa and Tifara. We can move forward. And then Adareth, Hadar, Yekar, and Shabak. Let's move forward. Those are the 10 higher realms of glory. You should have those already. These are the lower realms of light. These are um, as the angel of light, the enemy uh, poses himself as the angel of light. We said that in the last recording. And you can please go and subscribe to our YouTube um, a cutting edge, and you'll be able to get those teachings. Um, but the angel of light, this is what he poses himself as, an angel that has understanding, reason, mindfulness, um, knowledge, truth, spiritual ascension, and purity. He poses himself as this particular being. It's deception and it's seduction. And as a result of it, um, this is how he begins to deceive. And because the enemy is not, um, he has intelligence, but his intelligence is capped. Okay, his intelligence has been capped. Um, and his intel and his insight has been kept. And so this is why the warlocks can give you facts, but they cannot give you fulfillment. I'm going to say that again. Witches and warlocks, and when you consult the stars, they do speak because the heavens tell of his glory. But when you consult the stars and not the star maker, um, and the stars tell, can give, can give direction, and they use the stars in the, in the word of God in the galaxy to find Christ. And to know that Christ, because the stars had even had to declare the Messiah. But when we consult these things as um, for counsel and for wisdom, you will not, you will get facts, but you won't get fulfillment. The star had a fact that Christ was born, declared a fact that was a sign that Christ was born. And they followed it, found Christ. But Christ was the fulfillment of the law, not the star, not the universe. And so the universe will give you facts. It was created to declare the glory of God. And so it will give you facts, but only the created order, only the uncreated order, only the uncreated spiritual being, which is God, will give you fulfillment, will give you true enlightenment. All right. And so I just want to name these glories, um, these lower realms of light. This teaching is so crucial to this dispensation of time. Thank you so much, Charles, for that witness. Um, so you have the Kandaksas. Um, and it's important that you understand that the root to these two words are the Doxa glory. But the kin on the front of this, let me send this to some folk. Amen, Brie. Amen. Um, um, and this is why I do have a lot of relationships with people that that um, and not relationships like like we go out and, and, you know, and hang out and all that stuff. But I'm connected to people because of the witness of these revelations and the authority that's been given to me by Dr. Galena and by the spirit of the Lord. I have walked in wisdom and in revelation with people that have other faiths that consult stars and things like that. But God is helping me diplomatically help helping me helping me to help them understand diplomatically and with respect and honor and love. I'm not by
of my hidden Bible. I'm actually using context to show them our Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, kendoxos and kendoxia, the root word of that is the doxa glory. Ken in front of the doxa brings this doxa glory of transformation, brings it down to a glory level called addition, called uh, the lapidation, called arrested development, called stubbornness and pride. So, you go from transformation by the renewing of your mind and the doxa glory. To when you move with the kendoxos or the kendoxia in front, the, the prefix now takes that doxa to a lower level, a lower intention of God. And now you're at the realm of the snake. Yeah, now you're at the realm of the serpent. This is Hebrew and Greek. Okay, of that's in our text. So Robert, where are you getting this from? The Hebrew and the Greek, and this is also due by, by prayer and fasting and by trial and by rebuke. I've been rebuked for this. Okay. That this is what qualifies me, disqualifies me, it qualifies you now to learn this rebuke. Because rebuke is not just about getting the belt out. Dis I'm, I've been disciplined according to my, my discipline. All right. Um, calchesis, calcama, calcamai, and katakalcamai. These are all the other lower realms of light. Um, and, and the cow and the cuz, the cuz sound in Hebrew talks of it literally is it's it's the it's where god is offended this is really you can feel the energy of the uh, the offense of god this these are the lights that satan begin to move in um as lucifer and this is why the only way to deal with these spirits is you got to be exalted. you got to be cast out and that's how we have power to cast out devils because Jesus cat because Jesus cast out or God cast out with the angels of the Lord cast out Satan, and this is how this is where that power originates from, that authority or that maneuvering in glory to cast out comes from comes from the God offended with anything that wants the glory in His presence. sickness, any disease, any any impoverished thinking. I feel God. Anything that offends God. And the Bible says that because you love what I love and you hate what I hate, I have favored you. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. God consistently tells David and even Christ, because there was a, a lot of Davidic Psalms, a lot of the Psalms, David was actually prophesying about the Messiah, prophesying about Christ and actually having a conversation, conversation about Christ. And he was talking about when you when you hate what I hate. Can give you authority then when you're righteous when you have righteous indignation and not an attitude problem because there are two different things righteous indignation is not disrespectful righteous indignation is direct righteous in that indignation is not disrespectful i'm just indignant and i just don't use any what you're gonna say you don't like people yeah that's the issue that's not god because god likes people <laughs> god loves people but he's righteous and he has a standard Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Characters will come out of all of this. And so that's why the disclaimer that I want to give you um, when we're talking about these glories, we're moving now to the gatekeeping glories. And as you know, I, I give you a disclaimer. I let you all know how to reverence moving in these glories. Um, I, I really my heart is to help us all understand God's heart is to help us all understand how to move in this fear of the Lord. Um, because it is the fear of the Lord that Jesus moves in in Isaiah 11. Um, and this is what gives him a quick understanding. And this is what allows him to discern and judge and be a judge um, in the house of the Lord. Um, is because, yes, direct versus disrespectful. Come on, pull the tea and just put these some of these notes up right here. Um, and so the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord allows you to move in um, these realms of glory. You will literally, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had experiences where angels blocked me from access in the middle of a fast and said, you're not in fear, you're in tradition. Oh! Do you hear me? 
There are certain things we do in our church that's full of us, but it's not reverential. It's not honorable and respectful to the kingdom of God and to God. We have to begin to put God back in place. I had to throw the rag at myself because I didn't even know I was going to say that. That's another thing. I, you learn how to preach under the Holy Ghost and say what he say and then don't say what your flesh want to say. Because, hey man. But I've had an angel literally stand in front of me and say, where do you think you're going? You are in tradition and you are th you are trying to get this pattern of glory and you have to go this other way. I remember I was trying to um, trying to access a glory that was just he's um, that Dr. Gunner had released and I was at home. Just going and I promise you, because because we're supernatural, an angel stepped in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, it's glory. But this angel said, you didn't pay for this. And I immediately went on a 21 day fast. 21 days later. I, I, I immediately went on a 21 day. And the fast wasn't difficult. The fast was simple. But it was it was the prerequisite to enter this realm of glory. No, 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 no. You got to pay. You got to pay. Whether it's a fast, whether it's obedience, what whatever it is, you have to pay. If God, if Jesus paid it all, pay it all. So the disclaimer here is when you're carrying, stewarding, and manifesting, and distributing, which are different postures in the glory, you are a carrier, a steward, and a manifester, and a distributor, all right? When you're moving, no freeloaders are accepted. Come on, people, help me teach this. No, no freeloaders. You have to pay for this. You have to, uh, you, listen, you have to pay for keys. Hold, oh, woo, you have to pay for Please. He paid with his blood. So why don't you think you're not going to pay with your hunger pains? How don't you think you're not going to pay by having to heal through trauma? How, how, how do you think you're not going to have to pay by letting go of people that mean you no good? How do you think you're not going to have to pay? Uh, Ramasite. Or they have to be granted through, through revelation. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Come on and help me teach this. Every week, I willingly come here to get worn out. And so I paid through obedience. And then I paid um, through literally some things are frameworks. Some things are, are strategies. And I would just apply it. Sometimes you ain't got to reinvent the wheel. Most times, if not all the time, don't reinvent the wheel. Follow the regimen and the routine that your teacher is giving you. And then apply it to your and say, how does this work for me? I'm not, I'm not Dr. Galena. I'm Robert. That's another thing. Stop being copycats. We rebuke that spirit. In the glory, there are no copycats allowed. In the glory, you are not your apostle. You are not your pastor. You are not your mother. You are not your father. I told you, you have your own ACTG. You have your own DNA. I may at times sound like Dr. Galena with my tongues or pray uh, in, in a similar fashion or ways or maybe use certain languages because I understand Oh, not because I understand because of the anointing that flows. And then I understand when I'm using those particular words, those words are keys and because I'm rightly submitted. So I have access and authority and, and legality to pray some of the language, but no copycats. I don't copy her. I, 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 I'm a disciple and I'm a multi, I've been, I'm a multiplier of what she has. I'm not a copier. I'm a multiplier. And that's a difference. No copycats. Not allowed, but multipliers are. Multipliers are. Disciples are allowed, but not copycats. And so I'm not trying to be Dr. Galena. No, that's dysfunctional. I'm not trying to be Apostle Johnson. Dysfunctional. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, what? No, 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 that's dysfunctional. 
I'm not trying to be, I've never has been trying. And this is what gets, and this is, this is the dysfunction I want to mention right now. The irreverence, the irreverence in the body of Christ and that, that certain leaders have because you are not trying to be a mini me of them. It's dysfunctional. Be the best version that God called you to be. It's dysfunctional. And it's offensive because if I try to be Dr. Galena, if I try to be her and try to live her life, then I miss then, then Robert Alexander Cager. There's a vacancy in the kingdom. There's a vacancy. If I'm busy trying to be conjunction dysfunction, that's the name of dysfunction. <laughs> if I'm trying to be other people rather than being the best version that God made me to be, there's a vacancy in the body of Christ. I can only be me and it's a different spirit and posture to say, well, I'm going to do me. No, no, that's 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 dysfunctional because you need to sometimes stop doing you. But what you need to do is be the best version of who God called you to be. And I need to say this because this is reverence and, and, and the fear of the Lord. Practicality in your personhood. I hope you get what I'm trying to do. When I say things, I then try to give practical, real human examples of how to live out the fear of God or how to live out a particular concept. Um, and so the glory of God is both spiritual and physical, okay? They have uh, physical and, and spiritual um, uh, uh, applications. And when you don't operate in the divine nature of God, that's what that statement says, excuse me, there can be serious effects. There can be serious effects. I have about 25 more minutes. Um, Psalm 139 and 14, KJ is learning the scripture right now, yes. Let's let's go to that. Let's just see. We in Bible study. Why not? I got Psalms open. I just want to see what KJ is learning. KJ, KJ blessed us today. Psalm 113, uh, 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Woo! Woo! My soul knows the works of the Lord. It's time for your soul to know. Hallelujah. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Are we not going to start quoting scripture tonight? Keep it, move forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy to you what the Lord has been telling me on why we're going through. Activate, KJ. I know that's right. I, I, I want to prophesy about the reason, um, one, one of the, one of the, so, the sovereign reasons why there's been some shifts in our culture and the pandemic and kind of the benefit um, and kind of help us switch our perspective. But I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy Hebrews 11, 9 through 16. The Bible said to me, the, the Lord said to me, actually, a rest and a release from mental warfare. I, I want to prophesy a rest and a release from mental warfare so we can be God's original intention excuse me for that typo in the earth because i did this presentation excuse me for that typo arrest and release from mental warfare so we can be god's original intention in the earth your mental warfare is keeping you from being the praise of his glory thank you jesus your Mental warfare is keeping you from being the praise of his glory. It's warring you against glory, against your glory. Just put your hand in mind. Let's do some activation real quick as I, as I get this uh, Hebrew scripture. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for arresting our psychology and our physiology and our anatomy, even now in the name of Jesus. Breathe this deliverance and healing in. This healing and deliverance is a sign that you're on your way to a being uh, exploits, doing exploits for the kingdom and release. <sighs> right here. This is a sign. Come on. Healing and deliverance is our signs that exploits are on the way. Inhale. We receive rest and a release from mental warfare. <sighs> Now release. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 9 through 16. Um, I want to, as a matter of fact, 
it's actually Hebrews. It's Hebrews four. Hebrews four talks about there remaineth the rest to the people of God. It starts at nine. That's my bad. Hebrews eleven. I'm sorry. Hebrews four nine through sixteen. Hebrews four. Let's put that up. Uh, let's put that up for me. Hebrews four for your notes. Nine through sixteen. Hebrews four nine through sixteen. I've been in Hebrews eleven. Dylan, Hebrews 11 is about the Hall of Fame of Faith. And so as I've been studying glory, I've been studying faith. So that's why that's there. But it's Hebrews 4, 9 through 16. Thank you. And it says, There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into this rest, lest any man or woman fall under the same example of unbelief. So it's talking about prior that the children of Israel walked in unbelief. So the only way to deal with unbelief is to cast it out and follow it. Greek word, cast it out. So what, what did God do? He cast it out, a generation of the children of Israel out of the glory and could not enter into the next season because they had unbelief. The offense of God is different from your offense. God offense is because of his and his standard. Your offense is because of trauma. <laughs> Hallelujah. His offense is because of the testimony of Jesus and the spirit of prophecy. But your offense is because of undealt with dysfunctions that you need to that we need to give, give God a heart and help him deal with. Hallelujah. Verse 12. And this is how it this is how it deals with it. For God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the hands Jesus the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted like as we were yet without sin. Let us. Only unto the throne of that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time, in the time of need. I have families here listening and they're uh, moving out now. But um, let us therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I want you to understand as we now transition and I'm going to name these glories. We have about 15, 20 minutes as I name these glories. Um, it is time for us to understand that Jesus Christ is who is ushering us into these realms of glory. And he is the gatekeeper. All right. And the gap standard that is released his gatekeeping glories to his to not just sons and daughters of God, but to heirs of God, people that mature. All right. There's a difference between a son and an heir. Just because you, your mama's or your daddy's son, if you, and depending on how your mother and father was, if it was anything like mine, just because you was real Adele's Wilson's children, doesn't mean you had access to everything. There was some maturities. She didn't give me the keys to her car to drive by myself at an age that I, that was not appropriate because there are legalities and there are developments and maturations that I had to go through in order to get access to get the keys. To then be able to be able to have the responsibility to move forward um, in, in this. And I want to give an, a quick example. And as I'm, I'm going to talk about these gatekeeping glories. For an example, I was in uh, my father's house a couple of weeks ago when my younger brother was in the house and my father, and then they went, um, and they went out of town. My father gave me authority over the house, but he didn't give authority to my younger brother. And God actually opened my eyes to something to have a, to, the spiritual principle home and i said well he's a son too and my father was like but he's not responsible enough to watch the house and so i need i i trust you because of what i put in you but not only that you are of age and you are of this was just a few weeks ago um my father here my dad here he was like yeah you're of age to have responsibility over all of my house and here are my keys to my car if there's anything that you need here is da 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 and he began to give me access to things in the house that I had while he was gone. But my younger brother didn't. He was all, he's also a son. So just because you're a son or a child in the kingdom of God and in the house of God doesn't mean God is about to give you keys. And it doesn't mean that God is either going to reveal things to you. Because Dr. Gillian told us on tonight that uh, keys are given to you by paying the price, whatever that price, whatever that looks like. 
in your covenant with God, having a covenant, that's another way of saying it, or um, revelation. And there are some things that I'm revealed to you until you mature. Could it be that there are certain revelations that God has not given to you, not because you haven't borne your cross, but because you haven't, uh, uh, um, not because you're not saved, but you're not baptized by fire or blood washed. You can be all those things. But if you have not matured, there are still certain things that are not revealed to you. Revelation comes from maturity and intimacy and covenant walking with God because flesh and blood did not reveal to you, but because he was walking with Jesus and because there was something on his life that God wanted to give him at that appointed time that he began to grow in the revelation. And so not only when something is revealed to you, you don't have it all. You still have to grow in that revelation to then manifest these gatekeeping glories. So these realms of glories at the gatekeepers themselves. On behalf of the kingdom of God. And it is our assignment as joint heirs. That's why I had to go through that quick side to give you a side to give you that. It is our assignment now as joint heirs when we are maturing. Joint heirs of God to align within these realms of glory to bring kingdom impact, influence, legacy, longevity. Let's move forward. And now let's begin with these gatekeeping glories of God. There is a lot of prerequisites preliminaries that we must um that we must have we had to go through for you to understand the power of these glories and why you understand why we had to go through all of that in these last 20 minutes. OK, the Hader glory, we the Hader glory, Pillar Glenda prayed this glory this morning. The Hader glory is the realm of glory that earthly kings are aligned in. Yes, yes, my maturity. Thank you so much for bringing that phrase back up, Pillar Glenda, my maturity. The realm, this is the realm of glory that earthly kings are aligned in to possess that which belongs to God and the citizens of the kingdom of God. This is the gatekeeping glory of kingdom possession. And so as gatekeepers, um, there are particular glories that help us keep the gates, help us guard, help us be pillars and posts, help us to be examples and standards um, in the Christ and in the marketplace or in the spheres of influence to exemplify and do exploits um, concerning the kingdom of God. When you do not align in these, uh, in this glory, in this particular glory, there was a delay in kingdom possession. And when you or I or any of us fail to actually uh, level up in actually being all of who God has called us to be and stop being afraid to be the praise of his glory, there was a delay in king possession we don't just want kingdom manifestation the 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 furthering of that phrase is kingdom possession the kingdom the the kingdom suffered violence and the violent taken by force this is the realm where you begin to exchange with people that are unbelievers you begin to encounters and changes and impact with unbelievers with people that do not want God, don't serve God, haven't heard of God, been offended by church experiences, but have a particular rank on earth. But God said that the kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And it is our responsibility to understand your discipline and be disciplined accordingly so God can maximize not just your potential, but maximize the power and market the power of God in the earth all right he is trying to move in the earth the hadera glory also i'm just in a realm right now of prophesying in the Quran. it must be your time and it must be your term sis but i just want to prophesy to you right now that this hadera glory is another glory that you have been moving in and that you have been actually teaching people the practicalities of how to move this in and I'm going to get to the reason why I, why I just did that. Why I just prophesied the realm, another realm of glory that she's been operating in. The Hader glory. This is the glory of kingdom possession. How you begin to take your place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God can take his place. If you don't take your place, God can't take his place. Because the way God set it up is we're supposed to take place together. I'm a joint heir. Oh, oh hallelujah. I'm a joint heir. That means if when I take my place in the earth, in my industry, God takes his place. 
This is the number one realm that I have been rebuked in recently. There are some things that the Lord has been telling me to do and to set up that I have just begun to do within the last 90 days that God told me, Robert, you should have been done this. But because of his grace, because of his grace, and, and I'm telling you like rapid fire as I'm obeying God and putting particular things in order that I'll testify later about what God is doing. As I'm putting things in order, it's almost as though heaven is opening, but it's, it's open before you do it because sometimes, because some, because you're in delay, because sometimes you're in delay. And so you're trying to delay the kingdom. You're delaying the kingdom because you're in delay. You got to get in position. So God can get in position. Could it be that you're in the way of you're in the way of God by not being in place? Oh, I'ma just, you know, let's the I'ma just, you know, get out the way and step aside and da 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 You got that finger, there go that finger, there go that finger. Ooh, this finger, there go that church finger. <laughs> Ooh, that finger. Put the finger down and put your feet in place. Put the finger down. Stop excuse, excusing yourself from the table. Nobody told you to get up from the table. Nobody told you to get up from the gate. Nobody, stop excusing yourself from rooms because of people's trauma. You belong. Hallelujah. Do not let people's trauma dismiss you ever again in your life. I refuse to let people's trauma dismiss the glory that's on my life because they're dysfunctional. And so they're going to dismiss what God has on my life. I, I refuse. I refuse to submit to that. It's not disrespect. It's honor. I will be offending God and what he paid for by me allowing people's traumas and dysfunction to dismiss what's on my life. And so you know what? I, I won't tiptoe out. I'll dust my feet off and keep it moving as the scripture told the, uh, uh, the apostles to do. They don't want your glory. Don't tiptoe out. Excuse me. Well, my bad. I apologize. No, no, no. Boldly. Dust it off. Walk off a duck's back and go and move on in grace and in love. But don't let trauma push you out. Don't, don't we got to, we got to stop. We, we got to stop doing that. We got to get in place so God can be in place or he'll move you out the way because he's going to get in place. Because I'm going to tell you right now, God is going to do it with you or without you. But God wants to do it with to you for you uh-huh he wants to do it with you to you for you uh-huh so get in place forward let's move forward hallelujah hallelujah oh the savi glory the savi b in hebrew is a sound the savi glory the savi y'all just say that just the v glory my hand is like you know i'm thinking i'm french right now <laughs> from the, the, the savi glory because it's just such a supremeness to his glory, and I just love it. It just makes you be bougie. I just want to say that. It just makes you be bourgeoisie, just, just, just of standard and of excellence. Doesn't it? The excellence of his glory. Hallelujah. And so the glory of deliverance and escape, because deliverance looks good. Deliverance is taste. Okay, healing looks good on you. There's a song that's out, if I'm not mistaken. It looks good on you. The Sabi glory is the deliverance and escape for the community city and culture this is it was this one for you pillar shine yes this is the gatekeeping glory for breakthrough so this is the gatekeeping glory that moves you beyond deliverance for yourself but this is the glory that moves you into deliverance for your industry um and healing and deliverance for you is a sign and a wonder that god wants to bring healing and deliverance to a mountain of influence and so when we do healing and deliverance here at Cutting Edge, when we administer healing and deliverance, there is a plan that is then ministered to you holistically and, and, and resources that is given to you and that is communicated to you organically for you to, for you to continue to practically live out what God is doing in your life. And so that way you have now a context to say, now this is why God delivered you. We're... Here, here at Cutting Edge, the altar calls are um, not, 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 the altar calls are a place for understanding where you are. And there is a conversation that is had so you understand what covenants you need to make so that way you can actually experience holistic 
long lasting healing for yourself because God needs to take that healing for yourself into the marketplace. Into the marketplace. It's time for you to take your healing and your deliverance into the marketplace. One of the main reasons why sins come back is because when you don't share what God what God does for you, um, a, a worse thing comes upon you. There's a scripture that Jesus t talks about. And he tells um, the man of God, he says, what are you doing? Basically, he says, you don't understand what's happening in the realm of the spirit. This curse about to come back on you that I just canceled off your life. But because you're not bringing it into the marketplace, it's about to come back on you worse. So go do what I tell you to do and sin no more. That was a spiritual principle about healing and deliverance. Times we get healing and deliverance, but the reason why we end up back at the altar, because it and, and, and let God multiply it because God is a multiplier. I told you everything is like, these are the economics of God. God wants to multiply what he does in your life. And so when you don't build momentum in your healing and your deliverance and you have inconsistencies and you don't really get to the root of particular things and you keep hemorrhaging every week. And um, now this is not talking about mistakes. This is talking about uh, nature that have become habits and this is talking about you need a behavior modification and you need behavioral changes so that way you can stop having inconsistent breakthroughs but so that you can have perpetual blessings perpetual breakthroughs and that there are new cycles of prosperity in your life does that make sense because the negative side effect of not moving in this as a gatekeeper is you are actually going to consistently be in consistently be inconsistent Continue and have consecutive losses, and then you will get bitter. And so, a lot of people's business is um, not because they were born angry, but because they've had consecutive losses, and they need the subby glory to get out of the realm of loss. Ooh. Jesus Christ. And the realm of grief from this from the losses and move now into where your um the night becomes morning for you beauty for ashes all the joy for morning coming to praise for the spirit of heaviness we be man do it for a night with joy cometh in the morning that's the realm you need to live in it's called the realm of conversion the 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 the, the, the law of conversion and and so we need to come out of the, the, the realm of loss and come into the, the law of conversion, the realm of conversion. God converts um, your soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. Where the Lord converts a situation or a trauma in your life from trauma to triumph. Um, you can move consecutively. And Psalm 107 and 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So as we move forward, yeah, no, you were right. You were good. You felt me. You, you're on it. And so as we're moving forward, the doxazos, glory. The, the, if you, the doxazo's glory, you see that the doxa, the doxa glory is you got to get out of the realm of loss. And part of how you get out of the realm of loss, stay on the doxazo's, but I want to respond to that. Part of how you get out of the realm of loss is you allow, as you allow God in real practically and you allow him to say, God, give me your perspective. That's how you convert trauma. Give me your perspective about my situation that's 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 just a quick nugget i want to give you i can't walk you through the, the the operations of it but real quick if you got traumas that you or situations that keep happening you like god i want to get out ask god for his perspective ask god for his wisdom and his counsel about it just say god i pray i pray into the spirit of wisdom and counsel and i, I ask you god to give me understanding as to why i keep why this keep happening the doxazo's glory um, the pastor and me really want to minister, minister to that place right there. The doxazo's glory is the realm where you place honor, credit, and respect on God. You transfer glory to God. This is the gatekeeping glory that protects God's honor. And so P Pillar Crystal Cager prayed this so eloquently this morning and talked about, um, talked about everything that we do in, in, in simple terms. We give the glory to God. But this is the glory in Matthew 5 and 16 and in Revelation 15 and 4. This is the glory that not only gives him credit, but 
understands him as the source. And this is one of the main realms of glory that literally combats other particular um, expressions of spirituality that deny that God is God. This is the realm of glory that you move in as an intercessor or an apostle or a gatekeeper in the marketplace that wants to deny God his place. And so whenever you are put up against a particular situation where a philosophy, a paradigm, a law, um, a policy or anything like that is trying to deny God, God as being God, this is the realm of glory that we begin to pray into the doxazos, the glory that will, that will, um, you also have, what I love about the Hebrew and the Greek is sometimes the words are, are in there, the inter interchangeably. You also have um, zoe in this. Zos, you have the zoe, you have the life of God. And so this literally will, this will begin to infuse in the eternal life of God, the eternal life. Um, and when you're misaligned, or when you um, are out of alignment of this glory, there is access denied to the realms of wonder. That thing was taught um, uh, about a few months ago, in the middle of the pandemic, um, she talked about, she was at a church and she was ministering. I'm remembering, she, I was watching her online. So I was actually going to uh, go with her, but I had to watch online. And she was talking about impact, the impact driver. And she began to talk about uh, the realm of wonder and making impact and how the realm of wonder um, according to my research, um, she was talking about the realm of wonder and she was uh, case study number one. Hallelujah. <laughs> she was the research I was researching and she was saying that the realm of wonder um, is where miracles are sustained. And then when she said that, I began to track through the prayer shut ins. So I'm letting you into my mind on how I, be, I reflect on these things. I begin to look at the prayer shut ins and I begin to like, do, 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 do. this still exists in her life. This miracle still exists in her life this miracle okay she's moving in wonder because it's sustained over seasons and over periods of time when a miracle happens in your life it's a miracle but it's supposed to move into realm that's why it's called signs wonders and miracles signs miracles and wonders there was an elevation it comes as a sign that the kingdom is here and then it happens as a miracle that manifests in your dna and in your atmosphere, it defies laws. And then it moves into a wonder because it then sustains itself. I'm going to say that process again. The sign is that the kingdom is here. The miracle is that it's manifesting, defying laws in the earth or, the, or coming into the realm and bringing the realm of the impossible, right? And then it sustains itself. It continues to be. It is now a wonder. It is now classified a wonder. And so um, there, God wants to graduate some of our signs and miracles to wonders, but we're not aligned in his glory. Hallelujah. Let's move forward. I really feel the, the, the peace of God. I don't know, but I feel a peace. Jesus, the Kleos glory, Benitra, Kleos glory. This is the glory to give report, testimony, or record. It's the gatekeeping glory of the testimony of the saints of God. This is the glory. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Do you know how I uncome, do you know how I overcome Satan uh, and his works in my life through the traumas I've been through? I testify of the goodness of God. And I and I own and I also am transparent and I decree and declare I am imperfect. But it is it nevertheless. I, but it is the Christ that liveth on the inside and the night and the life I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. I begin to talk about God, I'm imperfect, but your glory lives in me. And I testify that yes, I was a victimizer or a victim of that, but we come you converted it for me and gave me your perspective. And now the famous line that people say is now what was once my misery is now my ministry and not only is it my ministry it was it was my mirror at one place but now it's a it's brought me to wonder and god has sustained something in my life these are the this is the glory that begins to testify of the sustenance the fact that god sustained you in your wilderness the fact that god kept you alive in your in the pandemic, I feel a like heaven be three. I'm telling you, the fact that God sustained you 
when you could have been taken out by COVID and the Delta variant, when you could have been taken out by pneumonia, God sustained you. He's a wonder in my soul. My, oh, I feel glory. I feel glory. I feel glory. The late Pastor Magnolia used to say, he's a wonder in my soul. Woo! He's a, in my soul. No, I'm talking about Robert's soul. Cager's soul. My affections, my passions, my, my, my proclivities, my inclinations, my, my, oh, my personality. He's a wonder in my DNA. He's a wonder in the places in me that wrestle God at times. He's a wonder right there. He's sustaining and keeping me. When my nature wants to fight against the nature of God, he sustains me with his right hand of power. This is the sustaining power of God. Oh, Jesus. If we was in person, I would run around. Jesus Christ, my God. When you testify of the fact that God is sustaining you in your life through your, through your trials and tribulations, there was a weak display of God's plan of redemption. God, when God redeems a thing, it is so. That's why it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When God redeems a person, you're supposed to say, I've been redeemed. Because you know what? I turned my sin into a business when I got delivered and healed. I'm going to just say that again. I turned what was once offensive to God into a business that talks of the, it's the my business is the process that I've been through. And now I'm reaping a harvest and I'm going to continue to reap harvest and I'm building it. And now I'm in the mode right now where I'm thinking about legacy and how do I, that's why I'm digging through some things to establish it for legacy beyond me. In the kingdom, I, he's going to use everything, every sin, every mistake. You know what I told the enemy and I told myself? He God, you're going to use every sin, every mistake, every pleasurable moment, every offensive moment, every trauma, every you're going to use it all for his glory, for the glory of God and the good of humanity is what I've been saying. Let's move forward. God going to use it all. He can use it all. The power glory, the power glory, the power glory, the power glory. And so that glory is the realm. Uh, uh, the, the Kleos glory is the glory of testimony, but the Pa'ah glory, this is the last realm of glory. This is the realm of glory that comes over newly converted saints. It's the glory of redemption. It's the gatekeeping glory of evangelism and salvation. It's the gatekeeping glory of evangelism and salvation. The Pa'ah glory. The Pa'ah glory is literally what comes up. Oh God, it's the old oh Jesus. It's the glory that came upon Paul. Yee! That blinded him. That blinded his nature. That was kicking against the prick of God. The Pa'a glory blinded Paul. The Pa'a glory blinded Paul. Converted him from being a murderer to an administer of glory. There are transfers, exchanges, encounters in the glory of God that I'm telling you the power of glory was the glory that changed Jacob to Israel. It is what took his It is what It is what took his nature as a trickster and a seductor because he was also a seductress. If you're a trickster, you're under perversion. If you're manipulating witchcraft, you're under perversion. You're under seduction and you're under deception. And it was the power of glory that wrestled that man. And wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. Till he became Israel. This is that glory that converts you when your soul is running away being from being this is the glory that will bring you and this is why this is why my philosophy about, um my philosophy about salvation and my theology about salvation is expanding it from being just a one-time experience to it you're now moving in the regeneration and the refreshing and the eternal life of god 
and, and, and several seasons where there are upgrades in your life, that salvation isn't supposed to be a one-time moment. The price of Jesus is too heavy for it just to be a one-time thing. So God literally every day is wants to renew my mind, wants to upgrade me, wants to say, this is newly converted saint. But then the maturation of this glory brings you, you literally, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Every season you taste of the power, our glory. Because when, when you're going into a new glory, you're supposed to be new. You're supposed, there's supposed to be a newness and a refreshing. Just like when you get out the shower, don't you feel refreshed? You didn't scrub good enough. You, you didn't wash good enough. You, you, you are clean. You feel that refreshing, that hot water uh, 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 in, 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 your, in your body. It refreshes you and you have now an energy. That's, 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 that's a natural explanation of the power glory. It refreshes you and redeems you and restores you and fills you and gives you something to clay us about, to testify about. Let's move forward. Um, when we don't move in this glory, there was a decline in the, the witness of God and the fame of God in the earth. When we don't move in the clay also, when we don't move in the power glory, we have a decline in conversion. And I want to release the glory right now. I want to release an understanding about glory. Um, this is what the Lord shared with me um, as I was reading 2 Peter 1 through 11. And I want to read the Amplified Version um, really quick. I want to read this scripture and then I want to pray. Hallelujah. Um, the Lord began to tell me that that's why I said this is the glory and the power. Of glory. It's not about uh, that it was about the glory of evangelism. And when the God gave it, I said, what? He said, son, let me tell you something. It is not just about the fivefold or your degree, degree slash credentials, but what glory has been assigned to you? Many people are, 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 are concerned about the fivefold and where my title and where my time and where my turn. But if you... Why are we asking for these graces but the gl without the glory? Because glory and grace go together. There is glory and grace go together. And so we're asking for these graces, but we have no glory. You're asking for these operations, but you have no glory. Because without glory, it means nothing. Because it will only go so far and it will only, it would only, because the, the apostolic is not to just the body of Christ in the local church, but the apostolic is to the body of Christ in the world. And so we've reduced the fivefold to being local church positions. The fivefold is not a local church position alone. It is, an, it is a part of the administration of how God establishes his kingdom in the earth. Let's, 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 let's go to, um, let's go to, quick, before we do, I, 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 need to, I need to say this real quick. Let's go to, I'm, I'm bringing it up on my end, and I'm going to tell you where to go in one second. Yep, stay on this right here. Um. Let's go to the book of the book of Ephesians, chapter four. Chapter four, um, and I'm gonna read out the Amplified version. I, I need to say this right now because we're talking about glory, and I need to say this right now because this is what humbled me and brought me out of being thirsty for titles. I, I need to just say this. I'm talking about Robert, and I'm giving you. I'm I'm Clay Olson right now. I'm giving you. I'm giving you my testimony. Um, and he and his gifts to the church were varied, and he himself appointed some apostles, special messengers and representatives, some as prophets. I mean, Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, who speak a new message God to the people, to the people. It didn't say to the local church people, it said just to the people. Some as evangelists who spread the good news, spread, uh-huh, these words of expansion and extension, spread the good news of salvation. And some as pastors and teachers to shepherd and guide and instruct. And he did this to fully equip and perfect the saints, God's people for works of service, works of service, works of service, not church service, but service, kingdom service. All right. To build up the body of Christ, the church, not just church service. Church service is good, but church service 
supposed to be a part of your process to help you have world service. Until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a what? Mature believer. Somebody that is able to what? And house his glory. Reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ, manifesting his spiritual completeness. This is what it means to manifest the glory. Manifesting his spiritual completeness and exercising our spiritual gifts in unity so that we are no longer what? Children, spiritually immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about by every wind of shifty doctrine, traditional teachings and messages that people are preaching, putting in sermon series to get out of their trauma and then in building churches out of it, but they're building pyramid schemes out of trauma. Hallelujah. Some knowingly, some unknowingly. Tossed to and fro by shifting doctrine. Shifting doctrine. The Bible says, no other foundation can you lay that's already been laid. A shifting doctrine. The Bible says that everything that can be shaken, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So the kingdom of God just stands because his, his doctrine doesn't shift. He's not a shifting shadow. Hello. By the cunning and trickery of unscrupulous men, men of no standard, women of no standard, by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything. For what? Personal profit. What is that? scheme? But speaking the truth in love, in all things, both our speech and our lives, expressing his truth. Let us grow up. Let us grow up in all things into him. Following his example, who is the head? Christ. From him, the whole body, the church, in all its various parts. Joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies. When each part is working properly, when I show up, I'm summarizing. When I show up, causes the body to what? There's no vacancies. So, I, so then we grow and mature, building itself up in unselfish love. We are apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists so that the body of Christ can show up in the world. Not at your church. Alone. We are here as the fivefold to help you show up in the earth. Because the whole earth is full of what? His glory. And so if you want to be an apostle, pastor, prophet, evangelist, minister, uh, elder, bishop, deacon, what have you any of those titles not interested in expressing his glory? It's offensive to God and it's out of place and it's dysfunctional. Because apostles are supposed to, prophets are supposed to, prophets, evangelists, teachers, ministers are supposed to express his glory beyond the four wall local expression. We're local, we're locally aware and we have global expression. Let's move to now this release. I want, I had to give you that foundation to release 2 Peter 1, 10 through 11, which says, therefore believers be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and his choosing. Be sure that behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. I want to submit to you and I want to submit this process to you that God is interested in your behavior because behavior, the church taught us ignorantly that behavior had to do with actions when behavior had to do with your character and your value system and your personality and your ability to get yourself together. Behavior, holiness, is not about actions. Holiness is about who you are. And the moment you recognize that I what I do because of who I am, that holiness will be and can be much easier to live out. Because you are now taking off the expectation to be perfect. And you just literally walk your process out in the timing of God and in the pacing of God. And so I'm not, I'm not concerned about being where other people is at, are at. Because I'm, I can only go as far in life as my soul and my personal development. And as I am willing to say yes. And as I am willing just to show up and be available for God to maneuver through. You can only go as far and prosper as far as you're willing to submit your soul to this process of reflecting and confirming your relationship with God. 
For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, there are virtues that are mentioned, character traits that are that are that are mentioned. Character definitely drives behavior. You will never stumble in your spiritual growth. You will never stumble in your spiritual growth. It didn't say you'll make a mistake. You won't make a mistake, but you won't stumble in growth. You won't have a development, but you will live a life that will lead others away from sin, from missing the mark of their process. I'm going to be the amplified version of the amplified version for you. In spiritual growth, it never said that you won't make mistakes. The scripture never said that. The scripture said you won't stumble in your spiritual growth. The scripture says that when you apply the divine nature of God. Because you're human born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You have to try by error sometimes. And you're going to get it wrong and your flesh is going to show up. But as long as you keep going up to the process, you are going to grow. He gave us a guarantee. For in this way, entry in the internal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will abundantly be provided to you. Will be abundantly provided to you. And so I want to release this entrance to you. For you to stop running from where you are supposed to go. And what you are supposed to do and who you are supposed to be and become. I want to, um, uh, and, if, and if Dr. Gaylene would have come on or if Pillar Glenetta, I know she said she wanted her to come back on. If anybody wants to join me up here of the pillars, um, we just want to show you um, if, you're if you're able to. If not, no worries. But I just want you to understand that there is a glory that is being released right now for you to come into covenant with God to say yes to his process for your life so that way you will not stumble in your spiritual growth. Don't be concerned with making with, uh, making mistakes, but be concerned about having stunted growth. And so our Father and our God, I release glory. I release the glory of um, the doxa. I release the doxa glory right now that we would up upgrade it in our processes and in our transformation by the renewing of our mind I thank you, Father, now in the name of Jesus, that in this docks of glory, we would reverence you. We would shabak you um, and that we would clay us and we would the fire of the anointing of God. We even release a fresh pyre, our glory, a glory of um, refreshing and being newly converted, whether it's first time coming into the kingdom or whether it's coming to some first time revelations. I just want to pray that your glory be released, God. I just want to pray that your uh, love and your grace be released over hearts and minds to activate us in the next um, version that we need to be and, and move in so we can actually be the gatekeepers and gap standards that God has called us to be, not just for us, not just for our local church, but for our communities, our cities, and the culture. Could it be, Father, that the culture is not shifted yet because we haven't shifted from being selfish? And so, Father, I pray, or being, and also being a and also not knowing or how to use Use what it is that you've given us. And Father, I thank you for who you are. There's so much more that we can say, so much more that we can do. But this is a great time to just give you glory and to just give you honor that we are here because of you. And I thank you for the, the depth and the capacity and the longevity of those that have listened and those that are cutting edge and those that are hungry and thirsty for real life change and transformation and shift. I thank you that you are growing us up. And I thank you for the time that you carved out, Lord God, and the time that we've committed to. And I pray. Lord God, a thousandfold return, Lord God, of glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the people that committed. Hallelujah to watching this, to studying this, to really digging to what it is that you want to do in their life. I give your name, glory, praise, and honor for them and that you're moving them forward in Jesus' name. I have some announcements for you. Hey, man. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This glory has been released. I want to let you all know that this, help me with these announcements, y'all, that this Saturday, we are praying 12 hours. We're praying 12 hours. Our, our virtual press shut in here at Cutting Edge. We are praying all 12 hours for the state of Virginia. This Saturday, praying for the state of Virginia. Join us for our 12-hour prayer, October 30th. We are praying. I believe it's 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or correct me. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and I believe it's uh we're, we're starting early 
as we do. We're starting at sunrise time and we're ending around sunset and we're praying 12 hours. Join us for this 12 hour prayer. I'm excited. You can find us on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. You want to subscribe there. Um, and it's going to be an incredible experience for us uh, to partner. Put the up there. If you're someone that wants to join in prayer, wants to make sure you get the information to be there, you're going to email us so we can have your contact information and so we can make sure that um, our community and the ecosystem, our family here has all of the information that you need to have. You can contact us at info at wearecuttingedge.org for more info on anything we have going on. Remember, next Wednesday we'll be here again for prayer at 6 a.m. And then Bible study again at 6.30 p.m. This is Central Standard Time. You can join us every Wednesday for prayer um, excuse me. And so hopefully you see the pattern that we pray the prayer points or pray a, a particular target. And then we teach it and expound on it because we want to make sure that there's a connection and synergy between our life and our Bible study life. And then you can take it home. You can take it home and, and really practice studying and praying uh, the theme and then studying the theme of whatever giving you to do in your life. So hopefully that's been an example for you and that you love it. Um, this is also a time we really want you to give. We really want you to be a soul um, to help us continue to love you, to serve you, to build you up and to develop you. Put up the ways of for me. I know we've said the commercials and you've seen the commercials, but soon you'll be able to see that again. Um, so that way you're able to understand how to give, we give to with our cash apps and our PayPal's and things of that nature for you to be able to give our Zelle. So these are the ways to give. That's at the bottom of the screen. We would love for you to give so we can continue to, to love you and to serve you and to support you and to develop you because Cutting Edge is here to help you clarify the covenant that you have with God. You can be the best version of yourself in the marketplace because we understand and in your life. And so we understand that if you don't have a covenant with God, if you don't have clarity and an understanding on the terms of agreements, how, on how you're supposed to live out your life so you can be all of who God has called you to be and his glory can best in you when you don't have a covenant with god then you don't have a god of covenant and if you don't have a god of covenant then he is not obligated to do anything to you with you for you or through you but god will move and being obligated to move in your life like never before when you just simply become aware and so help us continue to create resources and experiences like this to help you become aware of the standard of god on your life lastly um in that i want to uh just just remind you that on tuesday it was stated to you that on tuesday there is a meeting that is coming up for us to begin to, for Dr. Galena and Pillar Glenetta, our executive pastor, to begin to um, really create um, a, a room for you to get involved and for you to understand how to be onboarding into the experiences that we have at Ram University, which is the place of diplomacy, dimensional uh, thinking, directional learning, and discipleship, a place that will help you take your degree to the next level. We're all degreed and credentialed here. A lot of us are spiritually and naturally, but now time to understand how does this how does this make sense for my overall purpose in life well ram university is here to help you do that and then cutting edge is help you to remain on the edge and remain um in the vein of the flow of god by and per the covenant that you have with god you have the zoom link on down on down below and so all of what we talked about on tonight if you want to continue to do deep lives you start here we will see you on tuesday and i'm excited now again to see you on wednesday much love to you Bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Pillar Robert. We enjoyed on tonight, you guys. I won't hold you long. Pillar Robert Cager, he gave all of the announcements. Uh, we just want to make sure that you guys don't miss the opportunity to all of you guys who have shared with us since this early morning at 6 a.m. And you came back on tonight. Thank you guys again. You were in for a treat. You walk through this with Pillar Robert and want to continue to walk this with you. And so again, as Pillar Robert uh, gave the message, we want to partner with you guys as much as we can. Uh, it is not by membership only or discipleship, but it's also through partnership. And Dr. Galena, as our apostle, has offered to those of you guys who are in ministry, working in ministry, new to ministry, contemplating or inquisitive about ministry and want to partner into these studies, we want you guys to join us again on Tuesday. We'll be doing this Zoom call at 12 and 6 p.m. At the bottom of the screen, you guys can see right there the actual um, code and also access to that. If you want information on the exact link to that, please email us at our email. Um, and they'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Emails and say, hey, 
we want to partner. Hi, I am so-and-so. Hi, I'm in part of this ministry. Or hi, I am the pastor's aide. Or hi, I'm on the prophetic team or whatever it is. And I want to partner with Cutting Edge. Then you just let, let us know through that email and we'll get you guys connected with us. And then for all of you guys, we're getting ready for our external launch. And we need who? We need you. We need you. And so on that same call, we have breakout rooms. For those of you guys who are in it with us, you are helping us to build a foundation and build foundation to the next foundation and growing higher and higher. We need you. We're looking for those who are wanting to work in the ministry, doing the cutting edge all the way to those who are, have not heard of us or those who will be hearing from us soon coming up really soon we're excited about that so you too want to join this if you want to be a part of cutting edge in the infrastructure uh levels but going up and beyond we're going to ascend and align and so we want to see you guys there but all this information i know it's overwhelming and so we'll let you guys rest in it tonight let it saturate in your minds and we'll see you guys again on this saturday for our 12 hour prayer shut in on our youtube channel Cutting Edge at 5 a.m. We'll be on there live 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. as we pray for the state of Virginia. I love you guys to life. This is Cutting Edge. This is the way. God bless you and see you guys again soon. Hi, I'm Dr. Galena, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, and this is our official YouTube channel. It's a place where I pray that you will grow and fall in love with Christ and increase your connection and commitment with him through covenant building. We have a saying around here that if you have a covenant with God, then you have a God of covenant and he is obligated to do things with you, to you, through you and for you. Cutting Edge is already a part of some major humanitarian and social activism projects. We feed daily over 80,000 children in Zimbabwe. We help parents with special needs children, and we also are a part of criminal justice reform because we want to see the redemption plan for man. Thank you for partnering with us in your giving. All of our give giving information is at the bottom of this screen. We know that you're going to love what you hear here. So please like, share, comment, subscribe right here and turn on those bell notifications. We get pretty busy here at Cutting Edge. And so you may miss us, but right here, you can catch all of our replays. We here at Cutting Edge believe that the four walls of the church is not the only place to experience the love of God. We're here to go to the four corners of the earth, and we're going to show you that this is the way.